grade the um, road trip, would you? Because that's what we did earlier. Yeah, it's a great follow up. Thanks. Let's just get right into that. <laughs> yeah. like, great. Like, no sense. On what dude. scale? On There's, what scale would you like me to grade uh, it? Funny thing yeah. is, that's the exact question. Okay. You can pick one to ten. You can pick A, B, C, D, F, or other. However, you want to do it. Um, if we're going on a, on a you know letter grade scale, uh-huh. uh, when you come home after a two week six game road trip, and the way they had to finish too, which is in Minnesota, a place they've had a tough time especially in recent memory and against a team that's given them a hard time uh, four and two road trip. I think I'd give that a, a minus okay. B, B plus I okay. said B all, plus. all things considered just how, yeah. how long the road trip was. And um, I, I just think that in the NBA today, how competitive it is when you take four out of six on the road away from home, the Kings, by the way, I'm sure you guys have talked about it. They played twice as many road games as home, mm-hmm. getting that out of the way and coming home, getting more, I think they've one more long road trip this year. I think it's a seven game. Yeah. Um, Putting a four and two on the boards, that's that's pretty big, in my opinion. And then you have to come home for a homestand. We'll see how long of a homestand that is. Will Vegas, a potential Vegas trip, break that up? But um, it's a good place to be in when you come home. You gave him a, uh, a B plus yeah, and B an plus eight. eight 10, we kind yeah. of did both. Eight out of yeah. ten, B plus. Yeah. Not the best, not amazing, but pretty good. Pretty good. I mean, pretty they have good. some. I mean, if you look at the Dallas game, maybe the Laker game, and certainly the last game, I I thought the last game was spectacular. Yes, especially the first half. I thought they were. That was a really good version of the Kings. I don't think like it's it's uh, slandering the Kings to say I I don't think many of us expected that to happen though. They came out from the beginning and just oh. kind of put their foot down, and that that's a big win. And that in the Dallas game because Dallas was so good at home too, and that's the thing they're beating these teams that are undefeated or near undefeated at home. I think Dallas was four and one at home. You Lakers see, were undefeated. Minnesota Lake, was seven and zero. Yeah, th- this is those are pretty big wins. And that's yeah. kind of like reverting to bet last year's team how they had the most road wins in the West, and the Kings aren't there right now. It's early, but. They still have that, uh, you know, in their back. They're able to beat good teams on their home floor. And I think Minnesota, especially a team that is kind of the, you know, they were the one seed entering play on Friday, which, again, it's early. But they've been one of the more impressive teams coming out of the gate. So the Kings being able to kind of put their foot down. And it wasn't really ever close. They kind of made it close. I think it was an eight-point game early in the third quarter. But um, the Kings were just in control. Like, they never kind of seemed flustered and making big shots, timely baskets was a big thing on this road trip too. It's, it's, well, not in New Orleans, but hmm. um, it was a good road trip. And I think that Kings fans should feel pretty good about it. Sacktown Sports Kings insider Frankie Cardicelli with us. Frankie, uh, speaking of getting flustered, uh, would you mind running down uh, all the scenarios for uh, clinching the group tomorrow? <laughs> I was hoping you guys would help me a little bit too because on, <laughs> on Friday night, <sighs> it was, okay, simple. Warriors lose, Kings are in. But then now there's all these different, I think, is the one you guys are on too that if the Kings lose by thirteen, yeah, they're in trouble. Is that the one that's if, actually correct? It's like if they if the Warriors beat the Kings, then they're tied at three and one, and then doesn't Minnesota have a chance to also be three and one? Yes. But then it comes down to point differential, and yeah, like the Kings have the best point differential right now, but by thirteen, so the Warriors would have to beat the Kings by thirteen or more. And you do need, if I'm not mistaken, don't you need Minnesota to win because you need the yeah. three-way tie because if it's just Kings and Warriors, Warriors would win because the head-to-head. Oh, is that what it is? Head-to-head comes to a four-point difference. That's what I gathered. That's why, same thing Jason just said. I, yeah. that and the, So basically the Kings, they don't lose by more than 13. Just win. Just win the game. That's the easiest thing to do because we don't want to be sitting there yeah. looking Four at the scoreboard. I think that they'll know going in, though, because the Minnesota game is at five, I think. Mm-hmm. So they should have an idea. But If they win. That means they win their group. They advance to the Sweet 16 knockout stage, whatever. Serious question. Is there any sort of group winner memorabilia or clothing <laughs> or banner? Uh, uh, banner. A streamer? A banner. Uh, group C, is right. it? Champions? Are you saying kind of like how in baseball they go round by round and they kind of get new shirts? You get division champions and you win the pennant, then all that. I mean, do, do we get some sort of group whatever champions t-shirts? Probably not. Do I mean, they? Do they get hats and t-shirts on the floors? There is celebration. Uh, for sure. For probably winning the yeah. whole thing. I don't know if they're going to have anything. For I would that. guess for getting to the final four. Maybe yeah. the final four. Yeah. Cause that's something I kind of pointed out last year when we were in Portland for the Kings postseason clinch, you've watched so many baseball celebrations and even I guess football just to go to the Super Bowl, but NBA, they don't really, they don't really pop champagne. They, they do all that. They, until, we they were, didn't really get a good look at it because he was crying the entire time. He's 
not joking. We were in Portland, Facts. and and yeah, had, they didn't. You were there. Yeah, you yeah. you refused to sit next to me. You could have gotten a ton of TV, and I would have gotten in huge trouble if just I remember, did. Remember, second row seats. I offer this guy up because he's been working his butt off all week. Young kid breaking in. I bought a couple seats. Try to get him in. You I, know, Frankie. Like when someone cries, it makes other people like. Would you have cried because Dave was crying? No. I'm not a crier okay. in general. Would, but wow. But, what, but to see Dave wow. cry, that was like, a bad thing. You would have been right thing. next to him. He would have been emotional and you wouldn't have gotten emotional at all. Uh, I probably just wanted to get out of the shot. What <laughs> if, <laughs> I just would have just moved out of the way. Okay. What do you do if at one point, like, tears are streaming down my face? You're like sitting there, like, kind of uncomfortable. You're clapping. Yeah. And then, like, I just, in the midst of everything, like, I just reach over with your sleeve and, like, wipe my eye. Like, do you physically assault me? No, that's that's common. Okay. I mean, Sorry, that's I mean, common. And if, yeah. if I'm sure we know by then, I mean, I'm sure your phone was going off saying, hey you're on tv no that's sobbing. the best part of that whole story is my phone was dead and it was on the it was on the uh charger oh. Oh. in the media room where we were eating i had no idea the whole time or yeah i probably would have been like you know put some put some rouge on done yeah. something i had no idea till after the game and i went back and i grabbed my phone to leave with all you guys and there was 900,000 billion messages on there. Well, that'd be wow. hilarious then, because I'd be the one that has a phone. You'd be I'd, the one. I'd be technically working. It would have all the... changed hey, the whole thing. What are you doing next to Dave over there? Okay, so they're not going to pop champagne. Uh, they didn't pop champagne for that last year. By the way, also interesting, weird note about the the, the tournament as well. You mentioned uh, maybe if they make the Final Four, Chris did. They can't use that, though. I wonder what terminology. I don't think they can do Sweet 16 or Final no. Four, can they? No. Prob- no. So, so it. Well, the other stage would be. The last few. Eight. Eight. Elite eight. Well, that's that's the stage that. that you advance to but, is eight. Right. But knockout you, stage is what they're calling. Sure. A knockout stage. Knockout round fine. or whatever. But then you can't use Elite eight or Final Four. Yeah. I, they're, they're both trademarked. The right? Ocho. That's probably trademark yeah, too, yeah, right? Yeah, probably. All right. So. Jason and I were talking earlier. I was talking about tomorrow night's game. And I got a little worked up, Frankie, because I, I, I started remembering Work. game seven last year and how, look, no offense. You said it's not disrespectful to the Kings to say it did it. I don't think this is either. Like the, this, the, the Warriors are a very good team, but also the lights were maybe a little too big for them. You look at their percentages, and we kind of compared them to Game 7 and 2 which was also at home in overtime. They were terrible, 29% from beyond the arc, 59% from the free throw line. Like, the Warriors rose to the occasion, and the Kings wilted on their home court. They had everything they needed, except for, you know, working fingers, apparently, by two of their stars. Is Tuesday night's game another snapshot, as I said it was, of are the Kings ready to play with the big boys? I mean, I think it, as far as this, I can't say rivalry yet. That's the point. Sure. It's going to be under a microscope, no matter what the situation is. And this one for sure is going to be even more so because it's not quite, I think you can't really say it's a must win by, sure. de- by definition yet, but it's a game that for the Kings, if they want to get over that hump and be viewed as, and taken seriously, I think as far as the NBA or especially from the Warriors fan base standpoint, to be taken seriously, you need to win these kinds of games where there are things on the line. Yeah, it's an in-season tournament berth, and it's it's all that stuff, sure. But just being able to kind of hold your own against them, because the Kings haven't – I mean, we've been kind of seeing it since game seven. I mean, and into the early part of the preseason, there was that battle of a preseason game, which, again, doesn't really matter in the scheme of things. But And then that game in Golden State, um, the Kings have kind of had the football pulled away a couple times, and they've been really close but not quite been able to get over that that big hurdle. So – Tomorrow night, yeah, that's that's a pretty notable game. And I'm not going to sit here and say it's a must win. It should be treated like a playoff game. But I don't think that the guys out there are going to treat it like a regular season game. If that All makes right. sense. It's going to be it's going to be important to these guys. Jason, let's 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 solve a, a long held sports issue. The three of us right now. And we'll use that from here on forward. The only must win game technically is a championship game, right? Like is the last well, game or your season ends. Correct. correct. Like there's barely but. any must win games ever for any team. Yeah. And if so, you can count them on one hand throughout the year. So I know we, we all get caught up. Well, it's sure. not a must win or like, if you don't win, you die. That's <laughs> like gladiators. Those are must Pretty win matchups. Must win. It's kind of so must win. Can we come up with like, what about what I write down here? Like got to wins need need to wins like should ha- sh- sh- should well wins? i feel like should is more like well they're playing the bulls they should win at home like like you know they should because the team's 
but there has to be a different level of must win that we can attach because whatever that different level is, that's what Tuesday is. Well, what's the premise behind the saying? Why are we saying that generally is usually after like a four game losing streak. This is a must mm-hmm. win. So it's something about confidence, morale, yes. boost it. You know, maybe it's morale win. Spotlight, I don't Spotlight, po- uh, spotlight win, a morale win. I don't know. Spotlight. Necessary win. Necessary win. Necessary. This is a necessary. Necessary is pretty good. Well, we have schedule loss, so this would be a necessary <laughs> win. We need to workshop it, but bottom line is yes. Unless you're dying or your season's over, it's not a must win. But whatever the next level is, that's what Tuesday is, right? Like This is a big yeah. fucking deal. Yeah, if someone wants to put out the, the proper term or yeah, a yeah, better yeah. way to put it. But, yeah, it's a game that if the Kings, like, they want to be taken seriously in this, in this blossoming, we think, rivalry, which we think yes. it is. They have to win games, and they haven't won. They haven't beaten the Warriors more times than not. I mean, they've played what 13, 14 times mm-hmm. since the spring, and they they've lost nine of them, I think. So, or nine or ten of them. And couldn't we um, knock them out too? We're forgetting about that. Like, if we win, do we knock them yeah, out? Yeah, they'd be two and two. They're, they'd be two and two. Yeah, so done. yeah, they'd be done. So there that's you go. another. That'd be another great stamp of progress. It raises game seven. Yes, <laughs> it completely erases Steph Curry's 50 point performance in game seven. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I love the way I think Sam put it when he was on with us back, maybe the last time they played. And he said, you know, they, what that game reminded him of, I think it was the first time the Kings played uh, the Warriors was I like the Kings are that team that's chasing the Warriors and the Warriors have been hanging on to this pedestal. And it's like, there's the youth and we're not done yet. And it's kind of like every time it's, I don't know, big brother, little brother, you, every time they hold them off, it's it's just a little bit of another notch for the Warriors, and the Kings are just constantly chasing the team. So, you know, a win for the Kings would boost their morale, but it, it in the end, it's you know, it's you still got to beat them when it matters most later in the year. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you don't want this narrative to keep going too. I mean, it's, it's plus the Warriors are below five hundred, aren't they? Yeah, they are. They're, and they had a really Which makes it worse stuff. if they. That's the thing. It it's makes it worse them. if they lose to them at Golden One Center. The below five hundred wow. Warriors now complete though. That's part of the problem. Yeah. Draymond's back. Steph's back. That's the thing. From a side note, the NBA has to be salivating right now because this is what they probably pictured sitting at that desk. Yeah, planning out these games like oh that last Kings Warriors game because all the things going into it tomorrow kind of make it more i guess not a must win but it does kind of add more fuel to it because yeah. it is another home game for the kings kind of a chance for a quote-unquote redo like we were joking about but yeah you have a chance to beat them at home which you've lost game 70 lost season opener you have draymond green back in the yep. fold so I, i've liked the cup by the way just the whole premise of it the one thing i would change is the floors well i don't oh, love yeah. that I, part of it i like not the whole thing but i some of these things like the lakers clinched before the kings even played a third game they'd already played all four yeah, I feel and I know there's specific days, but it's not been balanced. I feel like everybody should play the exact game one, game two, game three and game four on the exact. I agree same with day. you on the exact same day on the exact like those are cup days. Yes, I completely yeah. agree, which they're you. they are. But they've had too many. So some teams, like I said, the Lakers were already at four. and and the Kings have played two games. But, and you know who could make that happen? A.I. Not yes. Allen Iverson, but like let A.I. Let's put schedule the schedule majors. out. Yeah. Last thing for well, not last thing actually. We got a couple minutes, but I also I like to bring in conversations with you when you you roll in, Frankie. We were talking about uh, Draymond Green earlier in his return, and you just said the NBA's got to be licking their chops. Draymond Green comes back, return of Game Seven, Kings Warriors, North, blah 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 blah. Would you subscribe to my theory that the NBA somewhere and deep down in places you just don't talk about at parties? They like what Draymond Green's doing. They feel like it's good for the game. But most importantly, if they wanted to stop it, they could do something crazy like enforce the rules on the floor and not enable him and call technical fouls and toss him from games. Does, is Draymond Green good for the NBA? Um, I, I think that when you even go back to what a lot of people like, you know, my parents or friends that are they say like the, the heyday of the nba the 80s 90s how physical it was how much there was you know feuds i think that villains are good for the nba yeah. now that being said i feel like there's a line that can be crossed sometimes i think when we see draymond green do every once in a while and especially with the, the kicking era he went through in mm-hmm. in the mid 2000 2010s that was uh, kind of over the line uh do you think he crossed the line with go bear i think that it definitely I think that people see different things in the moment. Like, I mean, when you're protecting your friends, like he might've seen 
Gobert really going around Clay Thompson. Sure. Now, I don't think it was – I did not perceive it that way. I'm okay. not sure if you guys perceived him going around. Gobert was grabbing Clay Thompson around the neck. I looked like he was trying to remove him but from the But do you think scuffle. what he did was bad for the NBA? I think I think that it's a bad look, yeah, when he crosses the line. Now, sure. him clapping and, and barking, and it's annoying to watch, but I think – when it's controlled and that's the most you're seeing from him, it's good to have a villain like that. But here's like here's, Dylan Brooks is the same way. Here's the nuance I'm trying to get to. We're talking about him crossing the line and how it's kind of bad for the NBA when he does something like choke out Rudy Gobert. But my question is, how is it bad for the NBA? Like list for me ways, ratings, revenue, eyes, long-term damage. How is it bad for the NBA? Is my is really my true question. Like when he's at his when he's full tilt, I'm saying choking the, out Gobert. I'm saying kicking. Jordan Poole. I'm saying Sabonis chest. I'm saying Rudy Gobert choke. I understand the moral and ethical equivalencies here. I'm asking, how is this bad for Adam Silver and the National Basketball? Well, from an entertainment and, and viewership standpoint, I suppose it's not. From a basketball right. standpoint, I think it is. But from an entertainment and getting eyeballs on the screens, like you said people are going to tune in for that. Like people are, if there's a Rockets Warriors game on national TV this year, which I'd imagine it probably is, I don't know. I'm just guessing um, that's going to get a lot of viewers because Dylan Brooks is going to be going against Draymond Green and that does sell. So I think from that standpoint, yeah, you have a point. I think that it is good for the NBA when he is kind of acting up and going crazy. But uh, I think from, from a basketball standpoint, watching the games, uh, it's going to drive you crazy and it does drive me crazy. I'm not sure you guys feel, but, um, yeah, I can't stand it. Try it drives me a little crazy. Well, so. probably Warrior fans, too. I mean, not that we're too worried about them, but that's one of their most important players. And if he keeps missing games, and now here they are trying to work their way back from below 500, which they can, but he's important to what they do. And if he keeps missing games because of this stuff, that would bother me as a Warrior fan. Well, I guess that's the thing, too. I mean, do you take that the NBA giving him three games or five games was a sign like, hey, I mean, maybe this is important to us. No. You think it would have given him longer if it was some yes. a different – I do. How long would they, would you, ten how long? Games. 10 games, 10 games, hundred thousand dollar fine. But more importantly, um, next time he's on the floor and you let and be fair and let him know and let the players association know, do the right thing. Hey, we're going to start enforcing these things. Like don't berate the refs for an hour and start calling your texts. And if that means that he gets two texts in the first quarter and he's gone, and that means he misses 10 of the next 12 games because he won't learn and it becomes a big deal and Skip Bayless is freaking out about it. If My point is this. If they wanted to stop Draymond Green from Draymond Greening, they could yeah. by not doing anything new, no Draymond rules, enforcing the existing rules, which is why – <laughs> and uh, and my guy in the chat is mad at me for saying for implying this. I hate I hate the dream on green stuff as much or more than anyone else on earth. It drives me absolutely up a wall. I think it's an incredibly fair question though. Does the NBA actually think it's good for them? I mean, it's been twelve years. That's like like my thing too. It's been eleven, twelve years now. I mean, I just don't he's like 34, 35 years yes. old. Yeah, I'm yeah. not I'm not sure how much is going to change by the time he's out of here. So. What What do we have to look forward to uh, this week from you, Frank? Uh, heading to practice in a couple hours, 12 o'clock. Uh, we'll get an update on Keegan Murray, which sounds like I think Mark Spears put out um, on that road trip that it wasn't supposed to be serious. Maybe the three days off will help. Um, they need him to guard Curry again. He did great the last yeah, time. They need him to guard Curry. He, it, you know, he's a big, uh, the defense has been big for Keegan this year. So going to go down there and get an update on him. Uh, that'll be on the website. Brandon Nunez and I will be getting those stories out by one, two o'clock. So nice. Really? Yeah. One, two o'clock today. Yeah. Okay. Keep, keep your eyes peeled, Dave. We'll put it. We'll put it in the put it in notification. We'll put it in the work chat. We'll put it in the work chat. Do we have a Slack? You know, we have a uh, a group text, but I think it's just like the digital people and the producers. But we can put you in there. Yeah, no uh, on air person. I'm sure you. No. I'm sure you'd love to. Be I in would it. not. I would actually not like that. So thank you for coming. <laughs> it's where in I send okay. all my gifts. Of <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. When we uh, when we come back for down territory. Don't forget Matt Barrows at nine o'clock. Oh. And right now, let's go with the Jiffy Lube drive of the game right now. 1 800 920 1140. 1 800 920 1140. What was the drive of the game versus the Minnesota Timberwolves? Yeah, you could win 